Hey guys, Scott with Home Perfect Restoration. I have Chris Lazarga with Lazarga Insurance Agency here with us. Chris is uh, is somebody that we've been working with for years. Really good insurance agent, has lots of carriers, really goes to bat for his clientele anytime there's an issue. So we wanted to bring Chris here so we can talk insurance. If there's any questions that come up, we're gonna have Chris leave his company information so you guys can contact him. But Chris, thank you for coming here and, yeah. and sharing some information. Uh, can you start off with just you know a little bit about you, your company, how you got started? Uh, well, I uh, I got started. It wasn't like a dream of being an insurance guy. Nobody no? does. Nobody has that dream. No? Uh, my mom decided that you know I sucked at health insurance, so she said, "Why don't you try PNC?" And ever since then, that's how I got into insurance. Um, but. I'm, we're basically uh, been in business now for about 14 years. Um, we represent about over a little, a little over 70 carriers, depending on what it is. Um, we primarily focus on property, so we that's our you know our normal thing. That's what we specialize in. Um, we can do other things, um, but we we like property more. <laughs> 70 carriers, so there's more than just the the big top five that are out there. It's probably crazy for some people to hear that there's that many insurance carriers there's two yeah and, it, and it's a nightmare to think about too like when you have to you know think about meetings and stuff and responding to different emails and memos and stuff um, but it, to me it, ins insurance and just like like in life right uh, you you never like stop learning <laughs> it's like constant like learning you know like there's always things changing and you can't say that you, you don't want to read a mem something that comes through or you don't want to learn about, you know, how this carrier has changed, like maybe like its exclusions or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's like a constant process. So to me, it kind of keeps it fresh when you have Good. more carriers. Yeah, you and you kind of talked about, you just touched on it about exclusions. Is there any new exclusions or endorsements that you're kind of see come out that are going to affect some people's policies or maybe what's covered, what's not covered uh, on top of just that we're seeing uh, this almost mass exit of carriers from California yeah. or certain territories in California where they're starting to non-renew policies. Well, there's always those typical exclusions like for the roof and stuff like that, you know, wear and tear, the maintenance type thing. If, if you don't do maintenance on your property, eventually you're going to have a problem. It might not be, you know, Today, if it was, you might be covered. <laughs> it's the things that are like, you know, you're not maintaining, you're just kind of like, eh, I'll deal with it when I get a chance, the insurance company's got my back. But if it's something that's, you know, an issue now, it'll be a bigger issue later. So it's good to, to, to have a, a, a second opinion or even, even a restoration company to come out and look at a, a situation before it gets bigger. Um, but with the exclusion part, we're basically seeing the exclusions with the, with the fire uh, with the DIC and the fair plan, that's kind of where we're seeing the exclusion for fire. Uh, nobody likes fire, uh, nobody likes water claims. Um, certain things are being excluded on that too. There's like limited wa uh, water uh, damage now on certain policies that you got to be aware of on the renewal. Um, a lot of people kind of overlook it. They think, oh, whatever, my, what's my payment? Oh, my payment didn't go up that much. I'm, I'm just going to stick with the same carrier. I'm not going to call my agent about this letter I got. You know, I'm just gonna sit it back here. I'll call them in a year. Um, things like that, you you kind of gotta be aware. You gotta you gotta be proactive with everything. You know, if you're gonna have if you're gonna take the responsibility to buy a house and think that you're not gonna have to deal with issues, you know, it's like thinking that you're not gonna have to deal with issues when you decide to get married to somebody or have a kid. <laughs> you know, there's certain things in life that you just it just adds something. You know that you have now you have to take care of it you know what i mean like right. you have a problem with your spouse you got to take care of it. you have a problem with your car you got to take care of it there's there, even even the house the house is a big issue because it could be thousands of dollars in damages and right that's why we have insurance right to cover the the big issues um and that's why it's mandatory if you have a mortgage mortgage companies are smart right so yeah if it's not sudden or accidental there's a, a very good chance it's not going to be covered Right. So, uh, and, we, and we are seeing a lot of limitations as it comes to there's certain carriers that don't cover anything as uh, bacteria related. Yeah. There's, um, you know, special endorsements for 
coverage for anything that is like a, a backup or uh, limits in coverage for mold, things like that. So, yeah. um, you know, why have, in your opinion, why have an agent to go to rather than like shop your insurance online? The, well, the agent uh, already knows when he talks to you, you know, hopefully um, he knows where to place you. That's kind of like, we're just like, like hitch, you know, uh, we, we talk to you, we kind of fill you out how you think, you know, what kind of a client we think you could be or you, what you are. And then we give you the options to kind of like choose, um, you know, and, and if you choose wrong, our job is to, to tell you that you, you should probably, you know, you know, change some things or update some coverages or maybe even go with this carrier because of this. Um, if you've had like a bad experience in the past with the uh, insurance company, um, a lot of times it's probably just because the agent didn't take the time to kind of go over certain coverages that you didn't have uh, or even like go, go through a review of things that might have changed with that carrier. Um, it's all spelt out on the policy. So anything, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a smoke and mirrors real thing, you know, it's really not. I mean, even if the claims adjuster has a bad day, you could still go back and get a second opinion and submit something to him, you know, and he'll get overridden by his manager or however it, however it works. But it's just, it's just knowing like, uh, with an agent that you'll get like that personal touch compared to, uh, you go to, you know, uh, I mean, Geico has agents now too. But it depends on uh, whether or not you, you know, you can call into AAA. Are you going to get that same agent? Um, are you going to get the same agent at uh, insurance or whatever every time? You got to re-explain yourself. A lot of people hate talking to other people. <laughs> so then the agent already knows who you are. Uh, when you call in, uh, we take care of you. We have notes all about your life. Um, you buy a dog or whatever, we have that in there. Um, we just kind of have your own little profile, which is like you have on Facebook. So that's kind of like why it's good to have an agent. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I see it in, uh, you know, many different scenarios of, like you said, an agent kind of knows what's going on in your life. So not only put you with the best carrier, but the best coverages, you know, based on what's the value of your contents, mm -hmm. uh, what area of town are you living in? Uh, and then having somebody like you said to go to bat for you if there is an issue mm -hmm. like and that's something that we've seen you do before where it could be one phone call or email and all of a sudden everything's getting turned around right. from uh, it could be an improper denial or um, not getting back to a customer for months as their house is torn apart and they're trying to get approvals right well the thing I think is is communication between all parties and to me I feel like if the client wants to go with that insurance or whatever congratulations you just became your own agent right. you know what I mean you can you you're gonna spend hours on the phone now with that company you know what I mean on hold or however it is sending emails back and forth you're responsible basically for your experience instead of having an agent that's gonna kind of take care of you and, and kind of make it less of a, a hassle a ha less uh, easy like you know yeah um, the, the way that I look at everything is uh, the, the KISS thing I think everybody does now because we don't like drama um, so it's keep it simple stupid and I just think about myself when I'm when I'm saying stupid <laughs> because I'm just like hey dude if I say this you know it's gonna be more complicated so I gotta simplify everything when I'm talking to a client um, otherwise you know they don't know what's going on um, and especially in a claim you know what I mean you might send an email to an adjuster and he'll reply and tell you something insurance lingo or whatever and then you have, you have to kind of make it massage the massage them say hey look you know uh, this is what they need or this will make it easier on on you if you send them certain things that they're requiring um, it's it, you know it's kind of like a claim is like a it, it's like you start at, at a point and then you, you know the whole the whole thing is uh, to make it to simple and easy and just like the commercials on the TV <laughs> mm -hmm. But a lot of times it, they're not like that. <laughs> they're not like that a lot. They're not yeah. like that at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, perfect. And and again, an, an agent is free mm -hmm. for the homeowner to use. They're not paying for that. Um, so and you you're able to really dive in and look for those discounts that may apply with certain carriers, right? And some bundle yeah. discounts if they're bringing auto and home together, which is something yeah. that they may not we find love, on their own. We love discounts too. Absolutely. Yeah.
So let's talk about, since we, we touched on it, the non-renewals in carriers pulling out of certain areas in California. It's something that we see a lot. We hear from customers that they had a claim. Now they're getting non-renewed um, or they're just, they didn't even have a claim, but they're getting a letter that uh, X carrier is no longer going to write insurance for them because they're in a high risk area. Are you seeing a lot of that? Uh, yeah, and we're seeing a lot of capacity uh, non-renewals where if some, a carrier is saturated in that area, they're going to trim some fat off of it. So they're going to re non-renew maybe your neighbors. So your neighbors, you know, let, everybody thinks like they have like all these options when they're in a high fire area, but there's, there's not that many, op there's not as many options as you think there are. Um, and then when you get outside the realm of the option that you had, you know, for the last 30 years, um, you know, I, I don't know, some old Allstate policy or something that they won't ever non-renew and, and, and then you're thinking, oh, I'll just go somewhere else, I won't pay my renewal. And now you have, you're gonna have to deal with the, 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 what it is right now, where, where now we're seeing it, prices increase, like with the fair plan, um, you know, they're trying to refile for 50% 50, 50 increase as well for that. And that's just your fire and, and smoke damage. Uh, your, your, your mortgage company wants you to not only have the fire and smoke damage, they want you to have other coverage too, because that's their investment. So now you got to have the two policies. You got to keep them uh, hunky dory uh, between the, the mortgage company um, and yourself. Um, so we get a lot of calls now with people getting non-renewed and then we're trying to get, explain to them that, you know, now there's something called a, a, a DIC uh, fair plan combination. Um, and it's a nightmare for us to explain to people because they're like, well, why do I need two policies? I only want to pay for the lower one. Um, but the, you need one with the other because uh, in the DIC, it's, it specifically says you have to have a fair plan to keep it. You know what I mean? A lot of carriers will make sure that you have it. Um, and if you don't have it, then you don't, you know, you'll be non-renewed or however again. So it's like right. all over again. It's just the same practice, you know? So just to keep up with the insurance, um, if you have an old policy in a high fire area, God bless you. Um, most likely it's going to be a good thing to keep it, even if it did go up a few, thou few thousand or whatever. You just got to make sure to call an agent to explain, to see, the, to see your options before you go online and you shop it and you find out, wait a minute, now this carrier is canceling me after 30 days because they went out and they inspected my property. Shouldn't they just accept my property the way it is because they have their system that knows everything, their system's not very smart. That's why you need an agent because we already know that of other people who have tried what they tried and we're trying to keep people happy. You know, we're not trying to get somebody to call us in an angry uh, uh, rant. We want all of our clients or even, you know, if you're not a client, whoever calls in to be amazing, amazing life. So our job is just to tell you our, what our expertise is in that area and, and what we think would happen if you did, you know, switch or go with another carrier because your policy went up a few hundred dollars. So. Perfect. And you have quite a few carriers now that are writing in those high risk uh, zones that you can put people with. Right. Yeah. We have a lot of high risk um, carriers that will take it. But if you're, you know, above a fire line score of like two to you know, it goes up to like 11 or whatever, or even a, a PC of 10, you're, you're going to be in that realm with the DIC and the fair plan. Nobody's going to really touch you because it's on the proximity of uh, the brush. And it's also on how easy is it for a fire truck to get to your house. So if it's right. not easy, you know, you're not going to be having all these options and stuff. There's options for DIC, but there's not really a lot of options for fair plan. And fair plan is the fair plan. Right. <laughs> right. I want to touch on renter's insurance. It, it is probably the most devastating thing that we see as it, as it relates to non-insurance because there's so many renters that think if something happens to the property and to, as a result, their contents, the homeowner's insurance is going to cover the replacement of their contents or for them to go into a hotel or, right. or get relocated, which is just simply not true. No. So we see so many times where there's like a major water damage or fire damage and all the contents for the homeowner is gone, non-salvageable, or they have to then move out of the house and go to say a hotel or another house right. and all that's coming out of their pocket because they had no insurance. And even worst case scenario for the homeowner too, where he can't get him out of the house 
and then nothing could be done on his house. He's getting a risk of having right. his his claim get denied because there's no work being done. Right. So we've seen so many homeowners end up paying out of pocket to get people to get the renters, oh, you know, please. into somewhere else so he can get their house fixed. Yeah. Now I've had a few people like that that are too nice, you know, to their their tenants. I told them I said, "You don't need to do this, man." He's like, "I'm going to put them up in a hotel in the Marriott," and I'm like, "No." <laughs> Do, I'm like, do they have renter's insurance? He's like, man, I told him to get that. I'm like, then, you know what? Ask him if they got a family member or somebody that they could live with, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but he was, he put him in there and I, I told him, you know, he thinks that the, the loss of rents or whatever would cover that amount, but it's only gonna cover what the actual like loss sustained would be, which is him not having that rent. Right, <laughs> right. Not for his, his uh, you know, tenants to not have a place to live while they're, you know, doing the claim. Right. So the renter's insurance has some sort of loss of use. It's not a lot unless, you know, somehow they have uh, have it up, upgraded or whatever. Um, but it's enough to where, you know, they could probably be in a hotel for a couple weeks or something, you know. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with the landlord, you know. Um, so he's taken care of because normally we don't see a lot of contents on landlord policies unless right. it's an Airbnb or something like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so if you are a landlord, you should absolutely require your renters to carry renter's insurance. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why apartment complexes, if you don't have it, they're going to provide it for you and charge you for it. And if you're a renter, it's something you absolutely want. It's cheap. It's not it's very cheap. expensive it's, at I all. I think it's too cheap. Absolutely. And, yeah. and you don't want to get the cheapest. You have to really assess what are the value of your contents? How much contents do you are you bringing into this home? What would it cost you to replace it? I had an uncle that was asking, you know, how much coverage he should have. And the way I look at it is think worst case scenario. Think of fire. A fire wipes out everything, your TVs, your appliances, your couches, your mattresses, your clothes. What is it going to cost to replace all that? And, and that's what you should be valuing, how much renter's insurance you're going to cover. Right. And again, the, the price is, is so cheap, especially compared to what you're going to spend if the right. worst case scenario happens. I mean, unless you can uh, like throw, I don't know, a couple ten thousand dollars in your bank or whatever that says i'm stupid i don't want renter's insurance so here's the money left over to buy my stuff back uh renter's insurance is dirt cheap you know it's not something that uh normally you don't get denied for getting renter's insurance or for even filing a claim um, on the renter's uh, insurance you don't really see that too often um, but especially when there's like a, a, a how do you say uh an apartment above you or a condo above you and there's a water damage or whatever and you know it damages your bed or damages whatever you know that if you're if you're renting and you don't have renters insurance you don't have any coverage right so you know yeah huge risk in those condo apartment situations but even single family home even if something didn't happen to that home but the neighbor's house caught on fire or there was a wildfire in the area and all that smoke damage comes in. Right. That, that house is getting taken care of, but the, the couches, that odor is gonna linger everywhere. So um, huge risk and, and definitely something that everybody should definitely have. Right. I mean, I like barbecue, but I don't like to smell it like 24 seven. Yeah. <laughs> Burning stuff. Uh, is there any experiences that you've encountered from somebody that maybe came to your office they they didn't have insurance they didn't have enough insurance uh anything that you know you want to share with kind of how you were able to assess that situation and maybe provide a a solution um well i mean that's like an to me it's an everyday thing um because there's so many people that are the shoppers they think they're going to go online and they're going to shop it and stuff but they don't understand that you know insurance is not meant, it's not like, I, I get some people have like the stigma against insurance where they think, hey, it, you know, it's, just, it's worthless. Like I'm never gonna use it, whatever. But what, the people that understand insurance are the people that had a loss. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> all of a sudden they find out, you know, wait a minute, I didn't, have an, I didn't have this. Like how much was this? Oh, it was only like a couple hundred dollars to add this coverage. It would have saved me, you know, twenty thousand dollars or whatever like the mold the mold remediation stuff if, if you don't look at your policy and you don't have uh if there's an exclusion or, or if there's an endorsement you can add and up the coverage for that a lot of times it'll only be like 50 bucks right and it could save everything you know what i mean it could save because either way in a claim it might not you might not have enough coverage 
in a claim to where you, the insurance company isn't sending you a bill or you're not getting a bill from your contractor. <laughs> right. Most likely, it, there's not, it's not an end all be all if you, you know, if you want to play on price, you know. Um, so we, we see that all the time. People come in and they say, hey, you know, I need, I need insurance. Um, this is who I have. They're, my policy went up and it's like, okay, cool. Your policy went up. That, that got you here. But what, what, what kind of a policy is this, you know? And then that's kind of when you can say, hey, look, we, uh, we can offer you the same price that you have, right? But this is, the, this is why it's better. And it's got all these other coverages and stuff. So if something did happen, uh, you don't have to go through uh, what, you know, a lot of people go through. And those are the people writing those Yelp reviews and stuff like that online is because <laughs> they didn't take the time, you know what I mean, to find out what kind of policy they actually had. Right. It's like buying a used car and not getting a Carfax on it or whatever. Yep. You know what I mean? You're going to have problems later. Uh, so that's why they have Carfaxes and it's like pretty, you know, inexpensive to buy. To find information out, um, you can just call an agent and they can explain it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great advice. And, and when you're shopping insurance, you, you have to still compare apples to apples because we'll see it where it could be a, a mortgage company is going to put you with the cheapest, worst, uh, insurance company because the premium has to be low in order to qualify for that house. Right. So just because you got assigned a certain carrier by the mortgage rep, it's still something you should look at. Right. You know, a classic example, and I don't mind saying this, is Western Mutual Insurance. We see that a lot of times where they're just going with them because they're really cheap, right. but they don't cover bacteria, they don't cover cleaning. A lot of times they don't cover testing and there's so much out of pocket that the homeowner is going to have to pay on top of the deductible right. and not planning for that claim. And again, when you're shopping insurance with, you know, agent after agent after agent or, or brokers, not all of them have the level of experience that you have. So they may miss a couple endorsements and they may look cheaper on paper, but then being able to sit down and compare those policies and make sure that, you know, one doesn't have any coverage for backup or mold while the other one does. And the one that does is maybe $50 higher. Well, right. it's definitely worth going with that policy. You got to compare the apples to apples. Right. And then, and then we get also like people who, uh, they'll come in and they'll, uh, they'll say that their agent doesn't call them back. You know what I mean? That's important too. Cause you know, with Western mutual or whatever, or residence mutual or whatever their name is, you don't get an agent at all. You're just getting a, whoever they put on the phone. It could be a, uh, an adjuster that they pay like per hour or not per hour, but like per like m wasting time or whatever, you know? So it, it's like, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but it's like a Wawa Nisa claims adjuster. <laughs> they, Cause they, you know, a lot of times they don't, they're not working for the company. They're like an outside adjuster, you know what I mean? So they get paid for, you know, paid to play and, you know, paid to do things that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a headache. You don't want to deal with it. So. Right. Yeah, I think that what we worked out uh, a, a lot of times is if someone calls you and they want to file a claim or they think they need to file a claim, you know, you'll get us to go out there and assess the situation before right. a claim is actually open. Because a lot of people don't even realize that you can, you know, put the carrier on notice and then find out you don't need to file a claim, but they can still drop you or, right. or increase your premium because right. now they're analyzing risk that there was a, a water damage situation. So pipes could be getting older. There may not be a claim now, but maybe next week or next month, there could be one. So it's it's the maintenance thing. Like you got to catch things before they become a bigger problem, and and you can't depend on your insurance company to be there if you let it get a bit a big to be, become a bigger problem. That's why it's right. good to have a, a, a Scott go out there and look at it, and make sure everything's hunky dory, kosher, you know, because um, you never know. It could be a bad. You might know he might notice something when you you might notice something when you go out there that a normal person wouldn't see, uh, you know, be a problem, you know? Maybe they think, oh, I'll fix it with uh, Flex Seal or something, right. you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, like a, a year down the road, we find out this whole thing's molded and it's like, you know, the baseboard, everything's falling apart, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I look at both of our businesses pretty similar as far as working as an advocate for the homeowner or the business owner or the renter, if it's renter's insurance, you know, a lot of people just think I'm going to call my carrier. They're going to take great care of me, right. you know, so 
us coming in, we work for the homeowner, we still have good relationships with the carrier. You have good relationships with the carrier, but you're still working for that policyholder. And mm -hmm. if that carrier is not taking care of them, you can move them to somebody that will, you can intervene, be their advocate and help. So right. I think it's really important that, um, that people understand what that difference is between say a broker that can put you with multiple carriers or the person that just is stuck. They have one right. option, one option only. Well, there's, there's, uh, there is that special person that likes to move around a lot. I mean, they like to move their, that's why they don't, they say they don't want to buy a house, right? They want to move everywhere because they want to have options. Right, <laughs> right, lots of options. Yeah, so it's the same thing with the client. Like it's easier with the broker to do that. Otherwise you're, 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 you're going to, from, you know, agent to computer to whatever, you know, who knows now that there's like tech companies everywhere doing stuff. Um, you really don't know when it's, it's almost like musical chairs. You don't know when you're going to have a claim with whatever company and how the outcome is going to be. You know what I mean? Right. And you can't call an, an, your agent if you don't have one and ask him, Hey dude, what do you think about this? And he'll tell you whether or not it's okay. Or maybe he'll send uh, some amazing person like Scott here out there to check it out. Um, before it gets worse or, you know, just to see, you know, maybe we don't need to file a claim, you know? Right. So. Yeah, see what the damages are first. So how can people reach you if they want to have you look at their policy or they want to contact you for getting a quote? Um, well, uh, you can reach us in a couple ways. Uh, you can go to our website. It's uh, www.myinsguru.com uh, and that's uh, www.myinsguru.com uh, or you can give us a call at uh, 951-234 four seven two zero uh, Monday through Friday nine to six so. and he is an insurance guru and he is free for you so utilize him as a resource contact their office shop your policy make sure that even just review your policy make sure that he's not seeing any gaps or uh, maybe potential liability mm -hmm. for you before a claim happens right exactly because it's too late it's like the, at that point, you know, there's no reason to have a conversation after that fact until the claim's done. <laughs> right, absolutely. You know? Well, thank you for coming, Chris. Yeah. And feel free to reach out to our office or Chris's office if you guys have any questions.